I want to get to a team that's making noise in the East right now, the Miami Heat. They steamrolled the Rockets last night at home. They led by as many as 41 points during yep. this game. Miami now 5-1 and one after that win. Good for second in the Eastern Conference at the moment. And Jimmy Butler also talking that talk. Here is what he told Yahoo's Chris Haynes about criticism he heard this summer that him signing with the Heat was all about him choosing money over winning. Quote, Mother blankers act like I am not a good basketball player, like for real. Just think about that. Like I can't come in and make a huge difference. Today, basically his point is that when he signed, he made the Heat a place for winning. He wasn't choosing win money over winning because where he goes, Winning happens this is follows. Jimmy's point. Um, we know the Sixers and the Bucks obviously have high hopes in the East. Do you think the Heat are a real contender in the East? I think they are because they have good team chemistry with Hassan Whiteside out. You think about a player that sort of was giving you half and half energy and those can sort of be you know small forms of cancer for a team. Now you have a team that's playing true team basketball and Jimmy Butler wants to be there. Clearly he's happy and he says those type of things just to get himself going. That's what he uses as fuel. But this team is number one and net efficiency in the NBA for a reason. They play hard on both ends. They play smart on both ends. Kendrick Nunn has, I don't even want to say, like, he's a rookie, but he's a vet. Um, Tyler Hero has potential. They have a lot of good role players, but then they also have Jimmy Butler coming back in at the right time. So, yes, this is the place you wanted to be. It seems like all vibes are right. And I expect them to continue to be well just because they have the culture for excellence. Remember in the preseason when um, – conditioning tests were like, oh, why, like, why are we talking about vets making conditioning? It's because the culture they're preaching and it's showing on both ends of the floor. They play hard, they play smart, they're developing talent. That's the Pat Riley um, culture that we all have come to know and enjoy. Yeah, I mean, there are two factors for me. One is there are games to be won in this league playing really good defense yep. and displaying core competence. Just just going out and not doing stupid stuff. Especially in the <laughs> East. Right, especially in the East. This team, I watch, I mean, I've, I've watched, I watched 40 of their defensive possessions this morning because this is what I do before everyone else wakes up. <laughs> and it is just, they are, uh, as. Some of you drink coffee. Kevin Arnovitz is watching Miami Heat defensive possessions. This Go. looks like a March <laughs> defense that has been together for five years. As Eric Spolster likes to say, everybody on a string they just don't make any mistakes they're really hard to score against the other thing is is every guy on that roster is out to make a point yep Kendrick Nunn and Duncan Robinson started the other night neither were drafted Duncan Robinson was playing in Williams College yes. like yes. you know and they have something to prove Bam Adebayo has something to prove he wants to be the best all-purpose center in or power forward really in the league motivation from not making the USA team exactly mm -hmm. like like you know um and Jimmy more than anybody though Jimmy has something to prove, which is right. he's been a wanderer the last few years, right? Mm -hmm. Like, he's not been a guy. By that, design. So, yes. <laughs> by design, but, but like, he is here to prove, like, look, I am the fulcrum of a contending team. Yep. And that hasn't been the case since I was in Chicago. And it's been a long time, and, and to the point in, in the text you put up on the board. I mean, he's out to prove that. And so when you have a bunch of people who are basically have something to prove, you put them with a, a, a top defensive coach and a top defensive program, a good cultural environment, like, I'm sorry, is this going to produce 50 wins in the East? It's just going to. I mean, I also want to shout out the Miami Heat front office because this is, we've known, one of the best front offices in the league for a long time. They've had consistency. There were some contracts there in those years after LeBron left that we're all like, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing. And some of those have not worked out, in fact. But they kept going after talent, stealing Kendrick Nunn out of the G League the way they did on the Major. last day of the season last year, obviously drafting Tyler Hero and knowing what he could be, and putting their stock guy. in Jimmy. And there was definitely people when they made that move, like, oh, they're going to regret giving Jimmy that big contract. His body's going to break down. And that may happen toward the back end of it. But if Jimmy gets them where they need to be in these early years of that deal, it will be a success. So. And by the way, especially when you're developing players who are going to play so far above their contract value. Oh, yeah. That, hey, if it does, maybe it's a little over, it doesn't matter because you can you can still get core value. Absolutely. All right, on the other end of that game, of course, were the Rockets, who trailed 46-14 to after the first quarter. Houston never led in the game. They are ranked 29th in defensive efficiency right now. Mike D'Antoni said after the game, quote, we were soft. <laughs> On a quick note, uh, Russell Westbrook will sit out tonight's game in Memphis due to rest. But Kevin, do you think the Rockets' defense will improve over the course of the next? I game? mean, mathematically, it can't get any worse, can it? I mean, it could it's just, because I mean, they're the But by the way, and, this is and there are 30 <laughs> NBA teams, so really, yay! I mean, this looks like a team that had a Saturday night off in Miami, but I think it's even more than that. I mean, there is absolutely no bite to this defense right now. Um, you know, it's funny switching defenses have a certain vulnerability, which is, mm -hmm. you know, you're not fighting over anything. The intensity can lag, and I just, you know, having spent the first week of the season down in Houston, right. it, it, it just it. Lags. 
lacks bite. It's a flabby defense with no purpose and no intensity. Houston lives and dies by the three-point shot, and we think that that only affects their offense. It affects their defense because when you take so many threes, they're first in the NBA in taking threes. They only shoot 27th right now. Um, I think James is shooting 22% personally. You know he shoots most of the threes. When you shoot those many shots and you're missing, those are long rebounds for the other team, easy points in transition for them. So if they eliminate and start making shots, then obviously the Rockets' defense can improve. Um, <laughs> but other than that, like you can, you can make a mistake there because that makes or misses. They're the worst team in pick and roll defense. In half court, you at least have to hold it down. They're not doing either. All right, so to your point about Saturday nights in Miami, I'm watching this game yesterday, and, and I called our research department, or one of our researchers, Kevin Haswell, looked up for me. In the last 10 years, yes. home games for Miami on Sundays, <laughs> the Heat have a record of 39 to 16. That's 70 percent winning percentage. So not too bad. there you go. Thank you, South Beach. The hangover effect. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.